invite you to take the Bibles, turn and open them to the book of Philippians chapter 3. While you're turning, I want to share with you what I want to begin, how, how I'd like for our church to begin this new year. Our theme is going to be His heart, our mission. Whatever the heart of God is, that's what I need to be about. Whatever is important to God ought to be important to me. Jesus said that He came to seek and to save the lost. He said that's the reason that He came to this earth. Whenever He was 12 years old, He was found, uh, He was not with His parents after they had gone on a pilgrimage to worship and they headed back home and He was not in the company of His family. And they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. And they found him in the temple reasoning with the scholars. And uh, they said, what is this that you're doing? Why were you with us? And he said, didn't you know that I would be about my father's business? I want to be about the business of God. Don't you? Amen. I, don't, I don't claim to know everything that is in the heart of God. But I know how to find out what is in the heart of God and it's through his word. So I want to challenge us this year to begin our new year by discovering, and that's going to be our title this morning, discovering the heart of God and going after the heart of God. And whatever that might be, I know that um, 10 years ago, God brought us the Glad Tidings Assembly of God Church to be your pastor a little over 10 years ago. Uh, I wound up in a church, pastor in a church in Mobile, Alabama. Because that's where I wanted to be. I wound up there because I had never in my mind imagined that I would ever be anywhere else except pastoring the church in my hometown near my family. And uh, that was my plan. I'm going to tell you something. It didn't work out very well. When I finally got to the place where I wanted to be, where I thought that God would have me to be, Church, I'm going to tell you that I wasn't happy. I was, I was dissatisfied and discouraged and it didn't feel like I thought it ought to feel. It didn't work like I thought it ought to work. <clears throat> and, and it didn't. And uh, I went to a board meeting one night and it wasn't those people's fault. I cannot blame it on them for me being out of God's will. I can't blame it on them for, for, for me determining from an early on time where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do and regardless of what else. And so I went home, I, I went to a board meeting one night. I didn't know I was going to do this, but I got there and I turned in my resignation to the board. And uh, they said, okay. And so home I went to Pam and she was, she always waited up for me. Uh, we didn't have very good board meetings and, and you board members, I want you to know that, that Pam doesn't worry about getting board meetings at the right time. We always have such a good time. <laughs> and so I, I went home from the board meeting, and she was waiting for me at the door. And uh, I went in the door, and she said, how was it? I said, I resigned. She said, oh, praise God. <laughs> I said, sweetheart, we've got a house note. We've got a car note. She said, it's okay. God will take care of us. We went upstairs, and we knelt by our bed, and we said, God, anywhere in the world you want to take us, anything in this world you want us to do, we want to do what you've called us to do. And, and I began from there trying to discover the heart of God. Lord, take me where you want me to be. And so I share that as an illustration with you this morning. Getting started, I want you to, I, 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 I'm hoping and praying that you will determine in your life that you are going to discover the heart of God. Not, not what you've always wanted to do. Not what you've always wanted to be. Not some preconceived notion of what God's will is. But why don't we ask God what it is He has for us. Where it is He wants us to be. And what it is He wants us to be doing. I want to tell you something. There is no greater joy than being where God wants you to be. It doesn't, it, you know what? Jesus was in the boat. And there were 12 other men in the boat with him. The storms were raging and they were fearing and he was sleeping. The psalmist said, I will both lay me down and sleep. I 
forget how he says it, but because God is there, because God's in charge, because he has faith and confidence in the Lord. And I, I want to be, I want to be where I can be at rest. You know that when we are able to be at rest and at peace, then we can be most effective. We don't, we're not always trying to dig ourselves out of a hole. We're not always trying to get ourselves pumped up and encouraged. But when we are doing what God's called us to do and we're being what God has called us to be, then we can launch from the launch pad instead of from a hole in the ground. We can take off. We can achieve great heights for the glory of God. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength Amen. when we're walking in His ways. Amen. Amen. Somebody say a good loud amen on that. Amen. I heard that. Praise God. So let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Paul is a good classic example of what I want to talk about this morning. Now, I promised you that I would not be long. More importantly, I promised my beautiful wife that I would keep it short today. And so you're going to have to listen fast. I'm going to have to talk fast. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in Him, verse 9, not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. That verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Thank you God for your holy work. Thank you for your anointed work. We ask you today that you would bring the bread of life and distribute it to us. Lord, that we may partake of your word, that we may partake of your anointing. Lord, we ask you to bless and minister in this place. We thank you for it. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Discovering the heart of God. If I'm going to discover the heart of God, I, I was thinking, I want to give you a plan. I want to give you maybe three things. I want to give you three things that you can do that will help you to determine, God, what is your heart? What is your plan? What is your desire? What is your will for my life? Now, I've used this little illustration before, but I want to, I want to use it once again here. Um, and I want you to think about the river. How many of you have ever seen a river before? Hello? How many of you, let me ask you this, do you ever go down to the river and stand there and observe the individual drops of water? I, 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 I honestly don't go down to the river and look at and say, wow, look at that molecule of water going right there. I want you to, for a moment to imagine yourself as a molecule of water in the river of God's life. In the life of God's river. In God's river, okay? I want you to notice that the molecules of water in the river are all going the same direction. Now, mind you, every now and then you have a rebellious molecule that jumps up on the bank and soaks in the sand. Every, time, every now and then you have a rebellious molecule that goes up into a slough. There's a lot of those. Up into, up into this or that and everything. But for the most part, the majority of the molecules of water in the river are going down the river. Amen? That's what molecules of water in a river do. And so I want to point out to you that you being a molecule of water in God's river, it ain't all about you. You ain't the only molecule in the river going down the street. You got some of these molecules that are going down the river and God's river going, Woo, look at me, woo, look at me. You got some of them out there saying, I don't know if this is God's will for my life or not. I don't know what God's called me to do. And we're all the time stressing and straining. And I'm not talking about you young people trying to find your niche in life. I'm not talking about that. But we that, that are older and mature and, and, and we're still rebelling against God not doing God has called us to get into the river and go with his flow and do what it is he's called.
called us to do. Now, it might be your calling to do something a little different than somebody else. Some of you teach Sunday school. Some of you uh, sing in the choir. Some of you do both. Some of you do this and that and the other. Whatever God's called you to do, get in God's river and go with it. Amen? Amen. All right. So I want to give you some ideas of things that you can do to discover the heart of God. Number one, change old ways. That's a hard thing to do. You know what? How many of you know anything about alcoholics and others? How many of you know anything about narcotics and others? I've never personally been to a meeting, but I've seen them on TV. The first thing you do is you introduce yourself, right? Am I right? Amen. Hello, my name is Joey Smith. And then what's the second thing you do? I am an alcoholic. I am a drug addict. I am a sinner. My name is Joey Smith. And I have old ways. The first thing we need to do is admit that we are sinners and that we have old and rebellious ways. And then we need to go about the business of changing them. Now there's a whole lot of things. Alcoholics Anonymous, I think, has 12 steps. I'm not going to give you 12 steps this morning. You go develop your own change, old way changing plan. But we need to change our old way. We need to dig into the dirt of this old life and see what's going on. You know what the problem with a lot of us is? Is that our, our, our flower bed of life has become old and packed down. And we haven't tilled the soil in a while. We haven't weeded the flower bed. We haven't fertilized anything. We need to change some old ways. St. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now that's, that's good preaching right there. That's Bible. That's anointed, inspired word of God preaching. But Paul is the first to admit. He says later on, he says, those things that I want to do, I don't. And those things that I don't want to do, I do. Just because it says it in the Word that all things have become new doesn't necessarily mean that all things are new right now. That's right. All things are new by faith in the future. I'm saved. I'm on my way to glory. I'm going to bust heaven wide open one of these days. You thought I was going to say something else. <laughs> I'm going to bust heaven wide open just like I am. I am saved and on my way. Praise God. But I tell you what, I've got some old ways that need some changing. And if I'm going to discover the heart of God, I'm going to have to get into His Word and allow Him to begin to do that, that process on me of weeding out the old, of stirring up the soil, of breaking up my fallow ground, my hard ground, if you will. I'm going to have to change some old ways. It's a whole lot easier to stay my old self than it is to change. It's a whole lot easier to stay just as I am instead of becoming what God wants me to be. I need to recognize in Christ that I am a new creation. Indeed, I am. I, how many of you born again? Say amen. amen. How many of you saved and on your way to heaven? Say amen. amen. How many of you got some old ways? Don't say anything. Just move. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 3. Look back at Philippians 3 and verse 7 with me. But what things were gained to me, Paul said, these things I have counted loss for Christ. What's he saying? Paul had attained in his life. He had attained in his life. He had made something of himself. He had become a somebody in his society and in his world. And then God rocked his world and let him know, you ain't nobody and you ain't nothing Pardon my, pardon my we all ease here for a minute, if you will. But it, God says, you ain't nothing, old boy. What you need to do is recognize that you're going against the river of God's will for your life. And Paul says, who are you, Lord? In other words, I don't even know who I'm talking to. 